What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. To be better prepared for when Revenant launches, we're taking an early look into the best, most dominating builds that each class will be able to use during this new episode. Now that we know the full details of what our new artifact will do for us, and the majority of the upcoming sandbox changes, we can start getting the right weapons and armor set up to have the most success at those new seasonal activities and the new Vesper host dungeon. In today's video, we'll be focusing in on one build for each class, and each of these builds are incredibly powerful with or without an artifact. The new Revenant artifact focuses heavily on benefiting stasis abilities and grenade launchers, but there's also quite a few benefits given to Void and Arc abilities, so each of these builds will be incorporating a mixture of these energies and, of course, grenade launchers. We start our segment off with Warlocks, where we are highlighting the Osmiamancy Prismatic build. And since the Osmiamancy is a featured class item perk, there are two ways of running this build. One way is by using the actual Osmiamancy Exotic Gauntlets, and the other is by having an exotic class item with the Spirit of Osmiamancy, and either the Spirit of Star Eaters or the Spirit of Verities. I honestly prefer the exotic class item route because we wouldn't be limited to just using cold snap grenades to be able to get the bonus grenade energy, allowing us to use vortex grenades and facet of dominance to apply weakening. But with either option, we're still going to have increased grenade regeneration and our handy dandy bleak watcher turret. This build is all about mass destruction, as you'll be freezing and shattering enemies by the dozens, and because we can easily maintain the benefits of Devour, we're going to have a great deal of bonus survivability and bonus grenade energy. When it comes to survival, we'll have Devour, giving us bonus health regeneration after each and every final blow, and by using Facet of Purpose, we'll gain overshields whenever collecting orbs of power. Void Overshields will now provide a 70% bonus in damage resistance, which should greatly improve our ability to stay alive. But just in case, we've also added on Facet of Protection, so that we gain an additional 15% bonus damage resistance whenever we are surrounded by enemies. When we are in our Transcendent State, that bonus will be increased to 32%. To make ourselves even more indestructible, we'll be utilizing Stasis Precision Weapons, like the Wicked Implement, which will grant us Frost Armor. We'll be able to build up as many as 8 stacks of Frost Armor, giving us a 36% bonus in damage resistance, pushing us well beyond 100% damage resistance whenever we also have a Void Overshield active. When it comes to ability uptime, our grenade energy is the main focus, and that's going to be rapidly regenerated thanks to the benefits of the Osmiamancy and Devour. But we've also added on Facet of Awakening and Facet of Balance, so that we can generate bonus melee and grenade energy and create elemental pickups. With how we've got this build set up currently, that's going to give us Void Breaches and Stasis Shards, helping us recharge melee and class ability much faster. When it comes to damage output, we're going to have a lot of balance between crowd control and boss damage. With artifact mods like Hail the Storm, we'll be able to trigger larger, more damaging explosions whenever shattering crystals and frozen enemies, increasing our effectiveness against large groups of enemies. By using the Conductive Cosmic Crystal mod, our Void abilities will deal increased damage against slowed and frozen enemies, which will be very harmonious with our use of Bleak Watcher, and our use of the Facet of Courage, which grants a 10% bonus in ability damage against those slowed and frozen enemies. Since we'll have mods like Supernova and Concussive Reloader causing enemies to become weakened with a 15% debuff, this means that we're going to be able to deal a lot more damage with our weapons and our abilities. To maximize on our damage potential, we are using grenade launchers like the Lingering Dread with Chill Clip and the Edge Transit with Bait and Switch. Whether you're tackling seasonal content, strikes, dungeons, or raids, this new Osmiamancy build will be an absolutely perfect choice. And for a complete breakdown of this build, be sure to check out my Mobilitics link that will be down in the description and comments. With that, we move onwards to our Titan class, where we have a new variant of the infamous Prismatic Consecration build. For the most part, this build is set up the same as it's been for the last few months, but there are a few key changes. The Syntheseps are still a great exotic choice to go with the Consecration build, and since they are a featured exotic class item perk, you could run this build in two different ways. If running an exotic class item, I find the Spirit of Severance to be an amazing option for bonus area damage, but Heart of Inmost Light would greatly improve your ability uptime. One big change to this new variant is that we're trading out Knockout for Diamond Lance, and this is because slamming a Diamond Lance will now let us instantly trigger Frost Armor for us and nearby teammates. 
We're also going to have the benefits of frost armor thanks to our use of Facet of Purpose and the Glacial Quake Super. Utilizing Diamond Lance gives us an easy method to slow and freeze enemies, which will be very symbiotic with several of the new artifact mods, like Hail the Storm, which causes bonus damage when shattering crystals and frozen enemies. It also releases tiny little shards that slow nearby enemies after we shatter a crystal, which does entice us to use stasis weapons that come with Headstone or Chill Clip. Crystalline Converter could provide us with bonus damage to our Shiver Strike, but by using Frenzied Blades, we'll have three Consecration Slams, and I find that to be much more beneficial, especially since we'll have plenty of Stasis Shards getting created to refill our melee energy. Since performing Consecrations keeps us in close range of enemies, using the Armor of Aramis will be a great option. When Frost Armor is active and we become critically wounded, we'll release a burst of slowing effects to all nearby enemies, greatly improving our ability to manage large groups of ads. We could continue to use Shackle Grenades to be able to easily suspend enemies before consecrating, but to double down on the stasis effects, we're going with Glacier Grenades. And since we are using Facet of Ruin, those shattering explosions will deal more damage to a larger radius. One big benefit that this new artifact gives this build is the ability to freely trigger Devour, which means that Titans no longer have to rely on the Buried Bloodline. By using Concussive Reloader, we'll be able to weaken enemies after damaging high-ranking enemies with any Grenade Launcher. This will also be triggered when breaking opponent's shields with a Grenade Launcher. By using Power from Pain, whenever we defeat those weakened enemies, we'll trigger Devour, so now we're getting bonus health regeneration and bonus grenade energy after each and every final blow. To improve our survivability a bit further, we could incorporate Stasis Precision weapons and use the Windchill mod, which would add to the Frost Armor that our Diamond Lance and Orb Collection will already provide. This new variant of the Prismatic Consecration build misses out on the current benefits of being amplified, which have provided a lot of bonus ability regeneration and survivability, so it might not hold up quite as well as it has through Echoes, but this should still be an extremely formidable build for Titans to use. Next up we have our Hunter class, and because of the changes to Void Over Shields and the heavy focus on stasis effects, we are looking at the Gerfalcon Hauberk Prismatic build. While this could be duplicated by using the Gerfalcon's actual exotic, I find it to be more beneficial in Revenant to use the exotic class item whenever it's paired up with the Spirit of Renewal, which is going to reduce enemies' damage output by 50% whenever they're trapped within a Dusk Field. And when throwing a Dusk Field grenade, you and nearby allies will instantly be granted with Frost Armor. This is such an incredibly fun build that's just as powerful. You'll have the luxury of continuous Void Over Shields, Invisibility, Frost Armor, and even Devour, keeping you alive and keeping all of your abilities charged. We'll be able to deal bonus damage against enemies because of the weakening effects provided by Tether, Supernova, and by Concussive Reload. And since we are using the Facet of Courage, all of our light abilities will deal 10% bonus damage against all of those slowed and frozen enemies. Since we are incorporating Void Weapons into this build, we'll be making enemies volatile as we're inflicting all of those slow and freezing effects, making us much more effective at bringing down big beefy enemies or large groups of ads. By using Withering Blades, Dusk Filled Grenades, and Winter's Shroud, we'll be able to trigger the benefits of several of the Stasis-inspired artifact mods, like Hail the Storm, Served Cold, and Crystalline Converter. The Graviton Lance would make for a great exotic weapon to go with this build, especially since Pulse Rifles will be able to stun unstoppable champions. And since we have the Facet of Dawn equipped, all of our weapons are going to deal 25% bonus damage after striking enemies with our Winter Shroud. To improve on our synergy with Stasis effects, we want to utilize grenade launchers like the Lingering Tread or the Lost Signal, which will be able to stun Overload champions. Even though Titans are getting a lot of extra focus in this episode, and might end up being the more dominant class, this Prismatic Hunter build creates the perfect combination of Void and Stasis abilities, and it will be an incredible option throughout Revenant. And with that, we have now covered the best Day 1 Revenant builds that you should be using on every class. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the builds that we've discussed today, the builds that you'll be using in Revenant, and what your thoughts on all these new changes are. Let us know down in the comments. If you need to make a copy of any of these builds, then be sure to check out my Mobilitics page that's down below. And if you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran, just looking for a new place to call home, then be sure to check out my Discord link that's down in the description, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. 
Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.